In this video, I'm going to share with you five of my favorite ways on how to create unique content using Pika. I'll be using Pika's amazing features and show you how to use them to make some really creative videos. Okay, let's get into it. For this first effect, I'm going to be using Pika frames, which pretty much acts as a keyframing tool. So you give it two images, one for the start and one for the end, and it will create an animation in between the two. And you can do some really creative things with it. To use Pika frames, all you have to do is select it from the bottom and then add in your first and last frame. And the really cool thing is you can choose it to just be one second all the way to 10 seconds long. And you can choose the aspect ratio here and have it either be 720p or 1080p. So this first idea I had was using real footage and putting it into Pika frames to create a unique transition while compositing it in real footage as well. I'll show you an example just so you can get the idea of it. So the idea I had was me sitting inside and then to be teleported outside. So I just recorded myself sitting on a table, pretending to write something, and then I pretty much did the same thing outside. To get the best results, make sure your subject is in the same position from the first to the last frame. So what I did was take a keyframe from the video inside and a keyframe from the video outside of the points where I want it to change. And then I wrote in background transforms. And this is the result I got, which I think looks awesome. It's got this incredible transition from the inside to the outside, and I was very impressed with it. it. Kind of looks like one of those shifting set videos, it's pretty cool. And here's a few other versions of it. And as you can see with one of them, it has a kind of particle dissolve look to it. So in that one, I added into the prompt, the background turns to dust and blows away. And it did a pretty good job at kind of emulating a particle simulation. So I took one of those videos and then all you do is bridge it from that first video to the second video and this is the result that I got. I am extremely happy with how it turned out. I think that transition worked perfectly. You can even see the subtle color and lighting change and I just think it looks great. And I could see a lot of potential with doing some really cool transitions with this peak of frames. And here's another version where I used a different image of me outside. So it goes from me sitting down to then standing up outside. And it looks great. I've seen loads of videos online of people doing the clothes change feature with Pika frames, so I thought I would test it out for myself, but implementing some of the techniques I used in that previous video. So I filmed myself in different locations and swapping out my clothes. So I've got these four different videos of me wearing four different outfits in different locations. I did the same thing as before and put the first and second frame into Pika, created that video, but this time I created three different videos in Pika using the Pika frames technique, and then I stitched it up with the original footage. And this is the result. As you can see, it does a really nice transition and morph from the clothing. And with the filming, I tried to do like a little reaction moment where the clothing would pop in. And yeah, I think it looks fantastic. It has a really nice and organic kind of animation to it. These were just really quick tests and I'm sure you can get much better results than I'm getting. So continuing on with using Pika frames and real footage, I wanted to see if I could create a unique morphing effect, but with compositing it into a scene with me in it. So I'll show you what I mean. So what I did was made sure I had a camera on a tripod, kept that fixed position and put the object on the table and kept moving and replacing it in the same spot. And then I recorded myself at the table. So then all I did was take a keyframe from each of those different objects and kind of zoom into the shot and then put that in Pika so that it would create the morph animation. So as you can see, the objects are morphing from one to another. So all I did then was stitch them together and made sure to mask them into the original footage. And it creates a really unique looking video where you get to react to the effect happening. And I made sure at the end to keep the apple in place so that I can pick it up and eat it, which I think sells the effect at the end. Now you can use free editing software to do this masking technique. You can use a software like CapCut. All you have to do is take those Pika videos and put it on top of your original footage and then just create a mask over that image to overlay it into the original footage. And here's another shot that I absolutely love. 
So I wanted this apple to be outside on the tree, and then for it to be transported inside where I pick it up. So I filmed the apple just balancing on the tree, and made sure it was perfectly centered. And then I filmed the apple inside exactly in the same spot it was outside. And then when you use Pika frames to cut from a frame from outside to inside, it creates this really nice looking transition. And I'm definitely going to be using this in the future to create some unique looking transitions. Just a quick note here, if you're enjoying this video, please give us a like and consider subscribing to our channel. That would be awesome. Okay, back to the video. Now let's have a look at Pika Swaps. What Pika Swaps does is it replaces objects in your video with anything that you want. They also have a similar tool called Peak Editions, which allows you to put anything into your videos. And I've actually created a full video just on that, so if you would like to check that out, then I've left a link to it down below. So back to Pika Swaps now. So I think maybe the main thing that people will be using this for is turning yourself into a different character. So I've been testing it out with a few different custom characters and I've been pretty surprised with the results. So I shot a few different videos of myself. The only thing with Pika Swaps is you can only give it a five second video. So you just add in your video here and then add in your character image here. You can just use the text box to describe what you want to be removed out of the image. So in this one here, I just wrote in the person and then it should notice that there's a human in the shot and replace that human. And this is the result I got from that prompt, which I think looks really good. It's added in the character pretty well. It's got a really nice animation to it. And here's another video, but with a couple more characters. And interestingly, it's got the characters holding the phone, which I was doing in the original footage. So it's really cool that it's kind of picked up on these small details. A cool feature is you can use the brush to select part of the video that you want to edit. So in this one, I've just selected my head. So hopefully it should just change my head into the character image that I've given it. And it did an awesome job at adding that kind of blue fluffy character's head onto my body. And in these ones here, you can see I've selected my hands and my head. And there's one with just my head selected. I'm really impressed with how it tracks onto the body. So here I gave myself an orc head. It stays tracked perfectly to the body and shifts perspective in a really natural way. And yeah, there's no glitchiness or anything. It's just a uh, yeah, very realistic and impressive head replacement. I can see these tools getting much better when they've kind of increased the resolution and the kind of output quality. But for now, it is very, very impressive. I've actually got a little bonus tip for you here. If you do want to increase the quality of these videos, then you can use Topaz. Topaz is an upscaling software, and at the moment they have this thing called Project Starlight. And if you go onto their website, they give you three free renders per week. All you have to do is drag in your video file and hit render. They can take a while to finish, but the results are pretty good. So here is a side by side from the original to the upscaled version. And I'm really happy with the results. So this is just a really good method if you want to take these kind of lower quality Pika videos and upscale them just so that they're a bit more refined and have that higher quality to them. Now another method which I love, which is kind of similar to the one before, is transforming and transitions using Pika frames. But in this one I'll show you examples using AI images rather than real footage. I had this idea of having different animal portraits and having it shift and blend in between each one. So I downloaded loads of different animal images that I created on Midjourney. I then added them into Pika and created loads of different videos and then stitched them together. And it created this video. It's nothing too crazy, but I think it does a really good job at transitioning in between those frames in a really unique looking way. I found this technique works really well for unique looking art styles. So in this one, I created two images of a kind of simple drawing of a what looks like to be a barber or a salon. And I wanted it to go from colorless to the one that is colored. And it creates this beautiful animation. And in these two here, I gave them two kind of isometric building styles. And it creates this absolutely stunning animation, which looks really professional. And I just love the look of the building shifting. It's just really, really nice. You can create some really cool transitions using Pika frames. I generated this image of a panther in mid journey. I created a close up and a further away shot. 
When added into Pika and giving it the prompt of quick zoom, it does this really awesome looking fast zoom effect. To get this kind of result, make sure that the transition time is like one to two seconds so that it will cram it into that time. And you can also create some really cool whip pans. So I used that image of the panther and an image of a man with a gun. And I prompted it with whip pan from the black panther to the man with a gun in the snow. And I think it did a pretty good job at doing a kind of dynamic whip pan action from the two images. And I wanted to see if I could create a shot where I go through this keyhole and reveal the monster on the other side. So I prompted it with fly through the black keyhole to reveal the creature inside. And I'm pretty happy with the results, to be honest. It does a nice kind of fly through the keyhole and it's got some really nice animation on the creature. So definitely think about the first and second image and how they can merge together to create a unique looking video. Now let's have a look at using Pika for animation. So I was thinking while using Pika frames, can I give it an image of a character, say over here, and an image of a character over here? And can it create an animation in between the two in a natural looking way? So I've got these images of a custom made character and I gave Pika the image of him facing backwards and then the one of him facing forwards. And it created this animation. Now there are some distortion in parts of it, but I think overall it does a really good job at turning the character around in an organic way. It knows it's a person, it's kind of moving in the right way. And then I gave it another image for him to walk over across the screen. And it created this. It manages to add in a really nice walking animation. I can see it getting a lot better. It's about 70% there, to be honest. And I think with a higher bump in resolution and just a bit more fidelity, we could be doing pretty good animations and cartoons using this method, as this will save you a ton of time from doing all those keyframes in between the animations as it just does it all for you. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. And here is another test. About a year ago, I created this story using different mid-journey images about a boy going up a hill to get a gift for his granddad. Now, the original was just static images, which I added a bit of movement to using my video editor. And I thought, could I take these frames and put them into Pika and create an animation from them? So one by one, I created the animation in between the frames and then I put them together and this is the result I got and it's doing some really creative transition work. And while it's not perfect by any means, it's doing a really good job at bringing the story to life. I see huge potential in this kind of technique if people already say have a children's book or just a visual book and they want to animate those images and maybe add some narration over the top. This is going to be a great method on how to bring those stories to life. Now let's have a look at using Pika for motion graphics. I found it using the PikaFrames function to be amazing at creating motion graphics. So I had this idea of a ball of wool being unraveled to spell the word atomic. So I created these two images, put them into PikaFrames, and prompted it with a ball of yarn unravels to spell the word atomic. And it created this video, which I'm pretty impressed with. It does a really nice kind of fluid simulation with the ball of yarn. And I really like how the light and shadow kind of transforms in the background. It's a really dynamic and pleasing shot. And then I wanted to do a shot, but with more colorful kind of flat 2D layers. So I found these two colorful backgrounds off the website Vecteasy, which is really good for free kind of PNG files and vector files. I then took one of the files into Photop, which is a free online Photoshop alternative. I added the word atomic to it and I put those images into PikaFrames and it created this awesome looking transition. I'm pretty blown away with how professional it looks and it just looks nice and clean and got a really nice dynamic animation to it. So yeah, these are just a few of the examples that I've created and this for motion graphics is pretty incredible. Okay, so we've reached the end of this video and I hope you've learned some really cool methods on some creative videos that you can use in Pika. If you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share with the community, then please leave a comment down below. Please give us a like and feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to check out any of our other videos, please click the video you can see on screen or check out the links below. Thanks for watching.